Have you recently started dating someone, but something about it just feels off, like they're not all in with you, or you're not feeling as connected to them as you would really like? and you start wondering if they're actually emotionally available. If this sounds like you, then definitely keep watching this video because I'm gonna give you the five signs that you are dating an emotionally unavailable partner. In fact, I'm gonna give you one specific sign that is pretty covert and something that you probably wouldn't expect. Hi, I'm Katya Morozova, personal and relationship coach for people who are ready to heal their relationship wounds, feel secure in their skin, and have healthy relationships. I'm also the founder of katyamorozova.me. I'm committed to helping people who have been wronged in their relationships to speak up for themselves, to heal, and to create life and relationships by their design. If you're new to my channel and you truly want to address the core of what it takes to have a healthy relationship and show up as your authentic self, then definitely subscribe. I've been coaching for the last eight years and one of the things that I focused on with clients is really helping them attract healthy partners. I've helped people get through the slog, the dating slog of unavailable partners to finally arrive on people who receive their love, respect their boundaries, and show up for them consistently. I actually have some interviews on my website uh, with my clients talking about their results through our work together, and I'm gonna go ahead and link that down below. If you're watching this video, then you're probably feeling a little bit lonely in your connection. Maybe you're at the point where you're wondering if the person that you're dating can really meet your needs in the relationship. It's possible that something about the connection isn't quite clicking, yet you may also be judging yourself for wanting too much. It's healthy to have standards in relationship. It's healthy to want more. Now, of course, you can't expect your partner to meet all of your needs. There should definitely be a good foundation of needs that your partner meets on a consistent basis. In this video, we're gonna talk about the subtle and possibly not so subtle signs that you're dating someone who simply can't meet your needs and who is emotionally unavailable. So let's jump right into it. Sign number one is one of the more obvious signs and it's a big one, so we should definitely get it out of the way first. So sign number one is that there's no growth trajectory. So what that looks like is, um, I'm gonna describe some characteristics when there's no growth trajectory in the relationship. So what that means is um, maybe you're seeing each other once a week and it's three months into the relationship and it's not really looking like your partner wants to see you any more than that and you are really wanting more. As a relationship grows, as intimacy grows, you want to be able to spend more time with them. You want to dedicate more of your time to them. And ideally, you want that same thing in return. But if it is met with this rigidity that you're only really supposed to see each other on, the, on this regular basis, and uh, if it's met with also a lack of communication, like this person is simply not available to you, this is one of the biggest signs that this person doesn't really want the intimacy to deepen in your relationship. Sign number two is someone who is hostile. So this is a pretty obvious one, but there are actually a couple of different ways that people can be hostile. One of them is covert and the other one is overt. So Covert hostility could be someone who loses patience with you, someone who gets easily frustrated with you, or someone who feigns boredom around you. Um, this, while this is a covert type of hostility, uh, it is not a healthy one because this is so covert and can be so subtle that it really erodes at your self-esteem and confidence in the connection. And usually when people do this, what really is going on inside of them is that they are feeling unsafe within and often can be can start to feel more unsafe as intimacy starts to deepen in your connection. These people are really afraid of intimacy and closeness. So as the intimacy starts to grow, they can really become 
hostile. If you in any way feel threatened around your partner or constantly on edge, or you notice that they make comments to you that are biting or undermining, then this is definitely a sign that I would not pass go. Now let's talk about overt hostility. Overt hostility can look like verbal aggression. It can look like physical aggression. Uh, and it can also look like threatening to leave the relationship. If your partner is overtly aggressive to you, then these could be early signs of an abusive relationship. Sign number three of emotional unavailability is someone who is overly competitive. Now this person could be competitive intellectually. Uh, this person could be competing with you in the realm of accomplishments. It could really be a number of things that they could be competing with you on. The problem with this is that usually when people are overly competitive, it's usually a sign that they're hiding a deeper emotional truth that they don't have access to and are unwilling to share. Being with someone who is over competitive is it can be exhausting because they want you to play a game that you probably don't really want to play and they can often be disappointed when you don't want to play the same game as them. Often these types of people have a way of covertly making you feel less than. If you're around this type of person all the time and they really want to share some deep emotional truth with you but they simply don't have access to it, um, it's frustrating for them. It's really challenging for them. And sometimes this come out, can come out as projections onto their partner, projections that make you feel like you are less than them. Okay, sign number four is the sneaky one. It's the one that I mentioned earlier that most people won't guess. Sign number four is a partner who is smothering, controlling, or people-pleasing. Most of the time, emotionally unavailable partners are kind of stereotyped as the, you know, the loner, aloof, unavailable, avoidant type partner. But that is not always the case. When you're dating someone and they constantly need your attention, they constantly need you to affirm who they are and how they feel, or they're constantly trying to please you um, or somehow perform around you, it's really just a deeper sign of an emotional insecurity and, 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 and also a deeper sign that they're not emotionally uh, un available because really what they're trying to do is meet their emotional needs through you. So they're not really connecting to you. They're not really there for you. They're actually there for themselves. So sometimes these types of partners, you might notice that you spend time with them, but they're not bringing that much to the table. And instead you always get involved in their drama, their emotions and their problems. This can be exhausting in a relationship did you know that this was a sign of emotional unavail unavailability? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, finally, let's get into sign number five. So sign number five is the most subtle of the signs, but it could be a really big one to catch. The fifth sign is someone who doesn't really think about you. So typically when someone is thinking about you, they call back to things that you said or they remember important dates um, in your life that you mentioned in passing. They remember little details about you. When someone is not emotionally available, they're not going to remember things about you because they're not really thinking about you. They're mainly thinking about themselves. And it might not be for selfish reasons. They might simply not have the capacity to think about someone else in their life, but this is definitely a sign of emotional unavailability. A good example of this is let's say you told your partner that you're up for a promotion and they know the day that this promotion is coming and when you're going to find out and weeks go by and they never ask if you got it. Using these examples in a vacuum is probably not the best idea, but if you notice that your partner is consistently not seeing you or hearing you or really remembering things about you and about who you are as a person, um, 
and they're generally kind of like surprised about who you are when you tell them like new information about you, then this is a really good sign of emotional unavailability. Finally, I want to add a caveat to this video that people are not perfect in relationships and these signs exist on a spectrum and everyone in their life has experienced some level of hurt and pain that cuts them off from trust, from compassion, and from presence. That being said, if you are constantly feeling unmet and unloved in your relationships, then there's a good chance that you are consistently dating un emotionally unavailable partners. One of the best ways to attract healthier partners is to work on your own connection to yourself. It's easy to point the finger outwards and say that someone is emotionally unavailable. It's harder to consider that we have mistrust and hurt feelings within us that keeps our walls up and keeps us guarded. It's possible that if you've been hurt in the past, while you may want more connection in the present, it actually may feel easier and safer to connect with people who are somewhat distant. The best way to work through some of these challenges is to work through them with a guide. If you'd like more information about some of my coaching programs, I'll definitely link you to my website uh, down in the description. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and definitely give me a thumbs up if you did. And if what I'm sharing resonates with you and you want more helpful videos that really guide you towards uh, having healthy relationships in your life, then definitely hit the subscribe button. I have a feeling that you're gonna like uh, one of my videos. It's called Raise Your Self-Esteem, Attract Love. It's gonna be popped up somewhere up here, so definitely check that out next. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.